Hello, welcome back to another Shokin Hello. My name is Opal Miranda, and today we're going to be learning about processing wool. But first, let's go check in with Rachel at the Ashokan Garden. Hey everyone, we are here in the Ashokan Garden. Have you all been out in your garden lately? I'm going to give you a quick tour about what we got going on here and what's been growing. So over here is our wonderful cucumber bed. And you may be wondering, what is this weird contraption? Well, as the growing season progresses, some of your plants might need a little bit of support as they grow. Um, our cucumbers need this, it's called a trellis. And you see these little tendrils that are starting to grow off of the cucumber? Those are gonna grow up our trellis and help support the plant. Can you all think of any other plants that might need a little support? What about these guys right here? These are our tomatoes and they are in a tomato cage. Uh, again, this is just to support the plant so the fruit that's starting to grow uh, isn't hanging on the ground. Tomatoes can also get pretty heavy, so we don't want them to fall over. Uh, when it comes to trellises or tomato cages, you can buy them at the store like we did with these, or you can do a DIY like we do with the cucumbers. Other things we have going on here is our calendula plant. And this is a great pollinator. Uh, you can also uh, harvest it for dis different medicinal purposes. But something that you want to keep in mind for calendula and other flowers is that you want to pick off the dead flowers. When you pick off the dead flowers, that's going to promote new growth. And we want our plants to be big and full and beautiful. Right here, I'm standing next to our giant zucchini plants. And as you can see, they're starting to get some flowers and some zucchinis right down there. And I think they've gotten this big because the last week and a half we've been so lucky and it's been raining almost every day. But if you're not getting rain like we are, remember you want to get out into your garden every day, do some watering, especially in the summer when it's really hot. And if you can, do the watering in the morning and in the evening so you don't get the leaves wet and scorch them with the sun. Just a little tip. Thanks for following me for an update in the Ashokan Garden. We hope that your garden is flourishing just like ours. Uh, we're going to film a couple things that are growing. If you want, post below with what you've got going on in your garden. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, everybody. I'm Ruth Unger Miranda, and I'm here at the Ashokan Center. And I'm wondering, have you ever wondered where the wool in clothes comes from? It comes from sheep, right? But how exactly does that work? I mean, look at this cool hat. How is this a sheep, and now it's a hat? Luckily, I have a friend here who's going to tell us all about it. Her name is Jessie Driscoll. Hey, Jessie, thanks for coming. Hi, Ruthie. Thank you. Let's go meet the sheep. Oh yeah, good idea. All right, I'm gonna introduce you first to our caretaker, James Williams, and he'll introduce us both, and you guys, to a couple of really cool new friends. Awesome. Jesse, this is James, our caretaker. Hi, James. Hey, nice Jesse. to meet you. He's right nearby, and she processes wool. Wow, she nice. She made this very hat. Wow, Yeah, and here's some awesome. yarn that I spun mm. before knitting it. Yeah, cool. that looks beautiful. You spun that. I did. Yeah. I love to process wool. First, I separate it into usable sections and wash it. Mm. Then process it. Um, I'll look at the wool before I decide how to do that. Mm. And then uh, spin it into yarn and then knit or crochet it into something neat. That's fantastic. Who's here? We have JJ in general, our Ashokan pets and hoppy sheep. And we just want to introduce you to them and show you where the wool comes from. So I have some carrots to hopefully persuade them to come out. Come on, guys. I hear something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is General. He's our bigger of the two sheep. Oh goodness, they love uh, banana peels and apples. What else? 
They like pine needles, clover, unlimited supply of grass that we have here, maple leaves. Yeah, a lot of, quite the variety of greens. In the winter, we give them grain every day and hay. So JJ is blind. Nope. We both sheared about two weeks ago. We hear that you have wool from this year and maybe also previous years oh, of yeah. shearing. Is yep. that true? Yes, we do. Well, a lot of what we do here at the Ashokan Center is around sustainability and using what you have to do something really cool. So um, James here takes care of these sheep and from the sheep we get manure for our garden. We get this wool that we're going to utilize today and we get to learn a lot about um, about some practices that have been around through all through history and that we get to carry on mm. today. Mm. So let's see that wall. All right, let's see what we got today. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, what we got last week. Wow, look at that. Yeah. What I'll do is go through and look at the staple lengths and figure out the best way to process it. It starts by separating it into locks and you see that beautiful crimp there. That kind of tells us how finely we should be spinning it. And this will be a lot of fun. So <laughs> why don't we head to my fiber studio and start processing it? Yay! Mm, cool. <laughs> oh. Hey folks, a few days have gone by and now Jessie has invited us to her fiber house. Let's check it out. Hello. Hi, Jesse. This is a beautiful building. Thank you. It's so cool. I never knew it was here. Yes. Well, it used to be a one-room schoolhouse. Okay. And now it's my fiber house. This is so cool. Look at all the beautiful stuff. <laughs> wow. And is this the is this the wool from Ashokan? It is. <gasps> That's so, so special. I took out some wool that I could use. There's a lot of it, but we're going to show a small bit. This is what it looks like just straight out of the bag. There are two different ways that I could process it. And the first is I have a pot of hot water. Okay. That all I did was heat it and um, put in some soap. And I don't want to jostle it enough for it to um, cause bubbles. I just want it to dissolve. One way would be to take this whole clump and just stick it in there, let it soak, take it out, and then repeat the process with um, water without soap in it. Okay. And then just put it on a towel and it would look like that. Wow, it's like clouds. It is, it is. In fact, there is a preparation called cloud and um, I will talk about that. Ooh. But first, this is one way, but a way that I prefer to work with um, fleece like this that has decent staple length is to find the dirty ends, the tips and... Is that the part that was on the outside or the part closer to the sheep? I take the part that was on the outside uh -huh. and then the cut ends are here. This uh -huh. is where it was cut. Um, I just find the dirty ends easiest to grab it by. Uh -huh. And I just kind of piece them together like this. Yeah. A section like that would be um, the appropriate amount to work with. I heard you say staple length and I don't know what that is. So can you tell our, our viewers? Cause maybe they don't know either. Staple length is just the length of the fiber after it's cut. I hold it by the cut end so that the um, tips are visible. Okay. And ideally I'd be holding one third and then two thirds of it would um, come out. Okay. and then stick it in the water and the water is very hot it would be just and if you can get wow. the water get you there. can actually see the lanolin coming out I see it and this is 
pretty hot, so I'm sort of burning my fingers a little bit. Uh -oh. Right now I should have cooled it a little bit, but um, basically I do this a few times until it's clean and I can shake that a little because I'm holding it together so it won't felt. Now I know one, I know that word lanolin. Yeah. But maybe not everybody knows that one. That is the natural grease that the sheep produces to protect its skin uh -huh. and it goes along the length of the wool it can be extracted and used in hand creams it's it's a wonderful um, natural substance it is used for um, breastfeeding women after they've had babies I remember that so basically wow those dirty tips are very clean now yep and you didn't and if, really scrub or comb it. You've just sort of moved it around in the soapy. Yep, there are a couple water. of little pieces there that I can remove after it's dry. So I would ooh, squeeze this. And this is something I can only do with soap because I'm holding it together. If it were a mess of it, you can't really squeeze it because that would felt it. So then I hold a third there and let the other two thirds Oh. go into the water and you see this is just from one lock already the water is pretty yellow with with lanolin mm -hmm. so I would do this and then I would when I'm done doing some of those I would pour out this and then repeat the process with water without soap in it uh -huh. and then it would look basically like this but without soap and I would just put them on a towel to dry. Okay. In about a day, mm -hmm. that's about how long it takes. To dry? Yep. Mm. Um, we can move over to here. Cool. This is what it looks like when it wow. just, this is, nothing was done to this except what I just showed you. Can I touch one? Absolutely. It's really soft. Yeah. It's neat and, and I can see yeah, you kept it all going one direction. It's not all mushed that's together. Right. And that's important for the spinning part, which and I'll I, show you. I still see that little crimpiness in there. Mm -hmm. And I know you said that you didn't want it to felt. Right. And I think that means you don't want it to like turn into felt. Like yes. Just stick together that's and become right. a chunk. Felt happens when it the still looks like when fibers. the scales on hairs um, grab each other and then they stick to each other and that's that's desired when you're making felt slippers or something but you can't undo it right can't undo it mm -hmm. so um this way of processing and i will show you how to do it leads to yarn like this which is pretty fine beautiful and um did you make that yarn i did i made this yarn from this fleece that is so this comes from, from ashokan sheep jj or general that's right wow that's so cool Ooh, it feels really neat it's like yeah. a little bit itchy <laughs> but definitely very strong yep hmm. it is it's not um i wouldn't classify this as next to skin soft but it could be used for bags and slippers and mm -hmm. if you have socks on underneath it felt warm just touching it like yeah. not like I could yeah. tell that it's yeah. wool. <laughs> yeah. So before I show you how to spin this into this, I'll show you what would happen if we had done it the other way, which was just to take the whole clump of it and wash it at one time. Oh. So I took this from from that pile, and basically what what you do to prepare this is pull it apart. Oh. Um, and make a cloud. It's actually called a cloud. <laughs> and you use that, <laughs> that term. And while doing this, it's, um, it's a good idea to kind of, if you're doing it outside or over something, little bits of what's called VM, which is vegetable matter, <laughs> comes, come out. Like yeah. um, that would be from grass, you know, what they're eating, seeds, stuff in their environment. Yeah, I can see some tiny little flecks yeah, falling out of there. You can see little, little flecks teeny coming out. Of grass. So um, first you do that, and then these are called hand cards. Hmm. 
and carding this fiber. Basically, you take bits of it and kind of mm. put them on one card is what this is called. I'll take a little more. And the idea for this kind of processing is to put air into it to kind of, this would make what we call roving or rollogs. Roving would be if it were pulled into a longer piece. But basically the idea for this is to mix the fibers and open them up. Mm -hmm. And it creates basically more of a cloud Oh, and yeah. you could transfer from one to the other a few times. Ah. And I'm doing this not very thoroughly, but to show you how it's done, I would do that a bit more thoroughly. And then roll, ah. roll it off of this. In the old days, would this be a chore you would give to one of your kids? <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> it looks kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, and so there's a roll log, and here are a couple that I made previously. And this would make thicker yarn. Cool. Yeah. So I guess next we'll go spin some yarn. So just as I held the back end, the cut end, to wash, I will twist it to make sure I've got a good hold on it. Mm. And then this is called flicking. Mm. And basically, <gasps> Look at that, it looks like a troll doll. Yes, it does. I, I flick out all the, wow. all the locks Whoa. and it really fluffs up. Looks like an amazing like paintbrush. <sighs> yeah. Wow. So that's that end. And then I do the same thing for the other side. But look at that, it's so pretty. <laughs> so that and then twist so I've got that available now and sometimes it can be um, cut end it can be a little more feisty but yeah. this is this is actually great for processing Good. the wool is it lends itself to this does a little bit pull out into the brush a tiny bit does it's not too much yeah you wow. could you were um, holding it tight yeah you could leave that for uh, birds to use uh, to make nests. Cool. Um, it, it usually has vegetable matter and stuff in it, so you wouldn't really want to use it for yarn, but it's, it's really a tiny bit of waste. So I've got this beautiful, beautiful prepared lock. You can see, even if I pull it like this, you can see the shine. And you know that the yarn will be shiny. It is shiny. So to spin this, mm. I use a drop spindle. Um, I could also do it on a wheel, but I'll show you the other kind on a wheel. You could also spin it on one of those wheels, but generally I do really fine yarns on those wheels. What turns fiber into yarn is twist. Twist is the glue that, mm. that holds it together. And so I pull out a little bit to start it, just like that, pull it out. I wanna pull it out a little bit, but not enough to come out. Mm. And then add twist. And in the beginning, oh my gosh. And look at that, all of a sudden, what? there it is. Very quickly turning Each. into yarn that won't <laughs> fall on the floor. Each piece <laughs> pulls a little more with it just on its own. Yep. And you just keep spinning it. Just keep spinning and pulling. <gasps> wow. And pulling. This is such a cool skill. It is. I'm so impressed. It's great, isn't it? It's so And awesome. then I, when it gets to floor length, I would oh. just roll it on. Wow. And I want just a little bit that's still there to hold the twist. Oh, wow. And then keep going. Wow. <laughs> so that is basic spinning. 
And um, if we were going to ply this to make it thicker, to make it two ply like the sample yarn, yeah. I would just, here I can show you that with this small amount we just made. Okay. Two ply, I think I know what you mean, like, like when you, like a rope, like almost like a braid, but a two way one. Yes, and you can do three ply or more. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at this, if you look very closely, you can see it's two ply and that just means that um, it's twisted in the opposite direction around itself. Right. It's for strength and also bounce. So what I would do, I would have more than this because this is only a very short bit that we just did. Mm -hmm. But basically you have the two, mm -hmm. so I would twist it in the opposite direction. See, it wants to go itself. It basically redistributes the twist. Yeah. And to show you on this thing we already started, I would wrap it in the opposite direction. And then just pull out the length like that and it would be generally much longer and have lots of steps. Mm -hmm. But I would hold it mm -hmm. and then twist it in the opposite direction from when I was spinning. Oh, wow. and you end up with yarn nice. <laughs> and here's wow. here's yarn i keep thinking as you were doing that with the wispy piece yeah of the old sayings like someone is spinning a yarn yeah tell your story yeah yeah or <laughs> i was thinking of rumpelstiltskin right didn't wasn't yes. there something of spinning, spinning gold yes and um and we just don't think about spinning, but she was just spinning it. Yep. It's a very literal word. Also reminded me, is it Sleeping Beauty who pricks her finger on a spindle? Is this thing sharp? <laughs> it's not sharp, <laughs> but yes, I think that is the story. I'm, I've always been afraid of spindles. Okay, I'm gonna keep my distance <laughs> anyway. I can't be too sure. <laughs> So to spin on the wheel, I would start it the same way I started the spindle one, just by pulling out a little bit. And this, I'm using the roll log. It's kind of a messier preparation and it makes for a more fluffy yarn. So I get the wheel started cool. manually and then my feet take over. You're paddling. Yeah. Cool. This is called treadling. This is kind of bumpy, the yarn, I mean, that's coming out of this row log. But, um, and this is a totally relaxing thing to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like your feet are doing the thing that cats and kittens do. Yes, that is a good observation. <laughs> when I'm finished spinning this, and I can keep going, but when I'm finished, I would um, roll it onto my hand and then apply it in the opposite direction and we can show a little bit of that. And it's okay um, in this style of yarn to have thick and thin areas because it makes for more interesting hand spun yarn and sweaters that have those kinds of characteristics in the stitches. So cool. Here's the bit that I just spun and now I will Wrap that around my hand. Round it around. Okay. okay. So, the same way I did that, I put these ends together. Uh huh. And as you can see, this yarn is thicker and it's a little um, less um, you organized. You tied, you tied it in a knot. Yep, to connect those ends. And let's see what it wants to do with the twist. Woo! Yeah. And there it becomes Boing. yarn. And so what I would do now is, now I go back through the orifice there, and I'll find something over here to tie it to, oh. just to get it going. And then I can take this knot out later. Oh. Um, and then I gotta spin it in the opposite direction. So, so this thing goes either going. way, depending on how you get it started. Yes, that's right. 
So now Very I cool. have to get it going to the left, and then my feet have to catch up. And out. as you know, I can't dance. <laughs> so this was a bit of a learning curve, too, for me. So this just... <laughs> Right, left, right, left, right, left. You got it, you got it. <laughs> it is kind of like a dance. Very repetitive dance. Yeah. Wow, look and at it. And here we got to the end of this. Huh. And there it is. You can see the yarn right there. That's a two-ply. It is, and that's thicker. Thicker yarn from yeah. that clouded. So Cloudy Here are type. two different types of yarn I made from the same fleece. Cool. Different preparations. Thanks for showing us this wheel. It's very cool. Can we look at all the parts of it for a second? Just because it's such a neat machine. Sure. Is it? Does it have a name like this kind of? You said it was a tre. Well, you're treadling, so it's a treadle powered. It is. This is called a country spinner. A country spinner. <laughs> Cue the pedal steel. <laughs> this part almost looks like um, like a wagon wheel or a, or a ship's wheel. It does, it yeah. sure does. And these hooks up here, do they like make it so you can like choose different sections to yes. fill? Yes, and so if one were to get pretty bulky, I would then move the yarn over to another one with the idea that eventually the whole thing would get. Here's one down here, if you can see that, that has a whole lot of uh, coarse spun curly yarn on it. Wow, that is curly. It almost looks like a sheep again. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so now uh, we'll go over to the table and see some things that are possible with wool. This is a different fleece. Um, this is a Cormo fleece. This is a lock from that. You can see beautiful crimp on that. And um, this is a section where I just washed it in a clump. And then this is what remains of one of the locks that I had washed and brushed with a cat brush. This kind of yarn came from this. And then this fiber yielded this kind of yarn. And if you recall the hat uh, that I had with me when we met the sheep, it was made from this fleece. Um, it belongs to a friend of mine. And here's a sweater, which is an example of something that can be made from this. Of course, I could also make a human-sized sweater, but that would take a lot longer. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love my little mini sweaters and I got some dolls so that I would have a way to use small amounts of yarn. This is a yarn that I spun and then I knit it into that dress. I actually sell the pattern for how to make that dress so other people can do that. That's and nice. here's a tiny little glove I made. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and it's not even the smallest glove I've I've done. This one was too big, so I made one that was smaller. I feel like this is a fairy tale and you've been challenged to, you know, knit, knit crochet a glove smaller than a swan's ear. Yes. This is another type of wool. This is curly wool. And um, that yarn you saw on the wheel was made from this type of yarn. Uh, this is Blue Faced Leicester, BFL fleece and um, there's some curly yarn. This one and looks like a sea creature. <laughs> and the pink one and, and that blue one right there mm -hmm. uh, were dyed with Kool-Aid. No. It has its own mordant, its own um, acid in it that sets the color. Can I smell it? Yeah. I don't know if it's still there, but that used to be ice blue raspberry lemonade. I cannot smell the Kool-Aid, but that's probably a good thing. <laughs> I wouldn't drink it, but it's great for that. <laughs> and then that, um, the brown and gray and other shades, tan, I guess, yeah. was all one fleece. It's one natural colored blue face Leicester fleece that has all those colors in the same like haircut. A calico is, sheep. Yes, yes. That's pretty cool. And this is a beautiful um, fiber preparation that, um, combines baby camel and silk what? fiber. And I made this oh. yarn necklace from fiber like that. That was a super coil. If you look really closely, you can see that I plied one 
directly around a core as opposed to um, the way I showed you earlier. This reminds me of how they make guitar strings. Yes, it is very much like that. And there are some bigger, um, that brown one with the pink on the end. Right hey, there. this one won a prize. Yeah, at New York Sheep and Wool. Coolness. This yarn has, it's, it was tail spun with long um, tease water locks that I, I put the cut ends in every now and then and it's this really wild yarn that could be worn as is. Wow. Um, it looks like a party decoration. Yes. Teeswater is a fascinating sheep breed. They look mythical. Um, they have these long, you know, 11 to 13 inch gorgeous locks. They're white. They're not blue and green. In all of these cases, the animals aren't harmed. That's right. And if you do shear sheep, it grows right back. That's right. Wow. That's really neat. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's like a renewable resource, I guess, as long as we continue to have healthy, thriving animals. That's right. Here are a couple of really fine yarns that I spun. This one is Kiviut, which is um, musk ox fiber. And then this one is cashmere from a goat. Is that another drop spindle? It is. This is um, a drop spindle made from fallen Hawaiian koa. Yeah. What are these two? These are the only two we haven't heard about. I yet. think they're, they're both silk and merino, and I spun those, and then I did a different kind of plying with that. I did um, chain plying, which is also called Navajo plying, mm. um, and it it's done to maintain color repeats, and so it looks like three ply, but it's actually just done with one long length that I keep chaining. It's very cool. It looks extra twisted. Yeah. And I do see those like alternating color areas. And if you spin tightly. Almost looks like beads. Yeah, it does. Pretty. And if you spin tightly and ply tightly, it can be used for things that need strength, like socks, luxury socks you could make out of that. This is this crazy chain plied silk that I spun around a core of wool so it didn't have to have strength. It just is so soft. <laughs> this is very soft. Wow, yeah. thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate getting to see so many different kinds of yarn made from so many different things in multiple styles. We learned two different ways of washing the wool and learned at least about two different ways of spinning it. This has been more than I even ever expected. It's incredible. And we got to see it go all the way from sheep to yarn. Yeah. and finished sweater. <laughs> <laughs> this has been incredible. Thank you. Thanks again, Jesse. We really appreciate it getting to see all the cool wool. You're very welcome. Thanks for asking me to do it. It's been really fun. Yeah, this is so fun. I feel like spinning could be a fun pastime. If I wanted to learn more about that, I could, I could find this place on Facebook, right? That's right. It's called Stash Enhancement Fiber House and Great. I put a bunch of stuff up on Facebook. Great. And this place is right in the heart of Woodstock and I've lived in this area almost my entire life and I never knew it was here. So it's really wonderful to see this beautiful space being used as a community art space and uh, eventually once the groups can gather, uh, a gathering space once again for people who are enthusiastic about wool and yarn. Maybe some of you out there are itching to learn more about wool. Click the links on this page or just write to us. We love to hear from you guys. So uh, thanks for joining us for another episode of Ashokan Hello. Whoa, that's so cool. Je she just once gave me a spindle and it's harder th than it looks, but fun. Thank you everyone for watching and especially everyone for commenting. And let's let Joey Driscoll play us out. Hi, I'm Joey Driscoll and this is Meditation by Jules Massonet.